Our first guest in this segment is Dale Lee. He is the president of the West Virginia Education Association. Dale, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you all? Good, thank you. Have you have you heard of this TV series we were just talking about, Masters well, of the Hour, the book? Uh, yeah, I have heard about it. I haven't started watching it yet. I've been a little tied up with the circus. but uh... sure. <laughs> <laughs> Now, which part of the circus do you uh, uh, snap your whip with, Dale? He likes the, the, the elephants. <laughs> Definitely the clowns. The, it's the, the... <laughs> no, it's the elephants. This, <laughs> the elephants. The last last uh, eight years, I think, it's been the elephants. Yeah, yeah it was... Uh, well, um, uh, I do a show with Howard Monroe every now and then, and, and when I come on, he plays uh, Melissa Manchester. Uh, <laughs> baby cried today. The nurse, the circus came to town. That's the way I feel every every January. Uh, Dale, did you have any relatives who fought in World War Two? Uh, yeah, I did. My my dad didn't see action, but he was in at the end. But I have a, an uncle. He's actually my only living uncle. Uh, on my mom's side, he's, uh, I think, 102, uh, but he got a Purple Heart at Iwo Jima, and he was uh, uh, a colonel in in the Army there and very, very, very decorated. He uh, uh, actually spoke a few years ago at the World War II Memorial Celebration in, in D.C. He was one of the guest speakers, so uh, he's... he's uh, very, very prominent, and uh, we're very proud of him. And then one of my best friends, his his dad lost a leg at, uh, uh, right before Iwo Jima, the island before Iwo Jima in the Marines. So, uh, and then all kinds of cousins fought in, in World War Two and everything. That's one amazing. of my cousins was actually uh, an aide for General MacArthur. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. <laughs> Talking about combat pay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, really. My... I mean, it's just amazing what these men went through and and uh, uh, and, and our heroes and, and, and never talk about it. But, but it's the same with, with any war, Korea, uh, world, uh, Vietnam, everything, the, the things that they had to go through and and to do and, and, and never, never talk about it, never want any accolades for right. it. Uh, yeah, we were just discussing my, that. My uncle will tell you that uh, that he's he's not the hero. The heroes were the ones that were lost there at Iwo Jima. I think the expectations then one of the reasons they we don't hear these stories of you know growing up. I didn't hear these stories from my my uh, aunt the my relatives when they went over. Certainly for the infantry, they signed up for the duration plus six months. So oh, they, yeah. they signed up to fight the entire war. They didn't go for a year or two years. It was so. I think the expectation of coming home at all from the ones I've talked to, they nobody really expected that to happen. You know, you went yeah. over with the expectation that it was that it was going to end there. Yeah, uh, they and they did it for for the cause of duty. Yeah, not for to be recognized or, or glorified. So yeah, I had uncles that uh was telling before we went on the show that uh killed a sniper. Uh that had been the sniper had killed several of the guards prior to my uncle killing him and my uncle never talked about it. It was something very 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 personal to him. Dale, let's move along to the legislative session here and uh, first and foremost the recent vote in regards to teacher carry, and uh, first, you're, you're, are you confident well, that that will become law and get through the Senate? Uh, no, I'm not confident at all. And and it's it's interesting that we're talking about uh, uh, the soldiers and fighting and stuff like that. I heard a, uh, I was at a meeting back in November, an NEA meeting, and we had a lady that had been combat a combat veteran, 20 years in the army, and now was teaching. And the discussion became on on guns in the in the classroom and having teachers carry. And uh, she gave a very unique perspective. She said, as as a soldier in combat, she was trained to kill the enemy, and her mind allowed her to pull that trigger on the enemy and without hesitation, without any regard. But as a teacher. Her mind now is in a different place, and her mind is to protect the kids. And while she protects them, the thought of possibly shooting a, a student or former student, uh, she, she's not sure that her mind will click the way it did as a combat veteran. And, and that's one of the things that worries me about about the bill is that 
you don't know until you're in that situation. You you really don't know what you're going to do or, or how you would, would handle it. And we've heard state police and law enforcement after law enforcement talk about uh, being against the bill because when they enter the building, they're looking for someone with, that's with a gun. And who's to say that uh, they're going to not look at the at the wrong person and, and everything else? So it, it has it has some problems, particularly the way it was amended in the House on, on the on the floor to say that you must, you shall, you shall. Uh, allow someone to carry if they go through all the requirements uh, rather than making it uh, the option of the boards to permit it or not. The feeling I think it'll get defeated in the Senate. Is that the feeling your members uh, in total, Dale? Well, you know, I have members who, who definitely want to be able to, to do that. I have uh, members who have researched it and, and even to the point that there is a lock that you can get for your gun that will only open to your fingerprint and, and uh, that type of stuff. But uh, a, a large majority of our members uh, have the fear and, and don't want to carry. So we have members both ways. But, but what I talk about is is we're not really addressing the issue. And the issue is the mental and emotional uh, states of, of these kids. Uh, we we lose far more kids each year to, to suicide. And uh, if you look at these mass shootings, most of the time it's, it's former students who have mental issues and emotional issues. And we need to be addressing that and more than, than uh, arming teachers. Dale, how do we do that? How do we... Well, address mental health issues. You know, it, it's there's uh, uh, discipline bills that were passed both in the House and the Senate. The Senate has their version. The House has their version. And neither one of them talk about finding this in elementary school. I mean, we have kindergarten kids that are that are violent and disruptive and and causing havoc. Uh, fighting and hitting and, and stabbing other students and stuff. We need to know, we need to, to look at an alternative setting in the school that would allow that student to be pulled out uh, and, and not just sent home because that's not the answer and work on their emotional and behavioral issues as well as their academics. And if we don't get it in elementary school, you wait until they're in middle school or high school, you've waited too long. You know, it occurs to me when, um, when when I was coming up through through school, the discipline place was in the hallway. You drag your desk out in the hallway and sit out in the hall and you do the the work there, knowing full well that when that happened, you go home and that's when the real discipline happens. Is oh, when, yeah. you know, mom and dad. Are going to, what happened at school? You want to stay at school for a while longer so you don't have to go home to mom and dad. Uh, have we lost that too? Was that a matter of of parental well, involvement of of our era that just is really hard to find now? Well, first of all, the, the, the family unit is broken down in West Virginia. Uh, we have the highest percentage of grandparents and, and non-parent parents raising these kids. So that family unit is broken down to that point. Uh, and, and we live in a society now where, you know, when, when we were in school, the teacher was right regardless. And when you got in home, if you got in trouble at school, you were in more trouble at home. Uh, and we live in a society now where they, with social media and everything else, you want to put the blame on the teacher. And it's uh, the teacher's fault for uh, doing this to my child and things like that. It's, it's, it's just a reverse. And I saw that when I was in the classroom, um, even as, as early in, in the 1990s, the, the trend reversing. Uh, but, you know, we, we need to, one, deal with the emotional issues of the kids and, and then make school a place where parents want to come and, and want to, to come and help their students and, 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 and be involved. Dale, you mentioned the discipline uh, bills in both the Senate and the House. Uh, the Senate version of the, uh, the Senate's discipline bill uh, does what you suggested, that they pull the student out into an alternative setting that they can address some of the emotional uh, emotional problems they're having but there's no money that goes along with this this is a pricey situation how do you how can you do that without some money you you can and that's the problem with the bill 
Uh, it provides that you, you put them in an alternative setting, but only 14 of our 55 counties have an alternative setting for the elementary school. So uh, if you don't provide the money to, to be able to do this with, with the kids, then, then you're really just passing a mandate that's not funded and it's not going to happen. So are we are we kind of doomed here? I mean, if we accept, we talked about the breakdown of family issues and that sort of thing, and it, the discipline issues seem to be upstream of the classroom. Well, we're not doomed. I mean, it, we actually uh, uh, need to uh, all together, parents, grandparents, communities, uh, citizens, teachers, administrators, service personnel, all of us need to come together and figure out how to address the needs of these kids. And, and it's going to take uh, a lot of emotional support. It's going to take counselors. It's going to take uh, some social workers and, and try to figure out how to to help the families to figure out the issues with these kids and, and help the educators to figure help with these issues. And, and then most importantly, we can't lose the child. That uh, uh, should be the, the foremost um, issue that we address and, and to do that you're going to have to spend some money Dale going back uh, to this uh, teacher carry is the SRO bill dead in the house or senate well uh, I mean with it, 13 days left and the one thing I've learned in my 16 years here as, as president of WBA is, is nothing is ever dead until midnight on, on the last day uh, they can resurrect it by amending things into another bill. They can, uh, uh, particularly in the Senate, suspend the rules on things to to bring things back up. So uh, uh, it, it's it's on life support, but but it, nothing is dead until the final gavel bangs on at midnight on the last day. Now that's been targeted, I think, around twenty four, twenty eight million dollars to implement yeah. SROs. Uh, to me, that is a, a cheap price to pay to enhance the safety of our students. Uh, yeah, but and, and again, uh, I, w- I would also argue that we need to put $25 million into uh, looking at the emotional needs of these kids and, and looking at ways in elementary schools to address that, too. Dale Lee is our guest, president of the West Virginia Education Association. Dale, in regards to the uh, teacher carry bill, uh, were you or Fred Albert consulted, or did you seek to make yourselves a part of the construction of that bill, or were you able to air your concerns in any way? You know, Delegate Smith uh, from Mercer County, who's actually my delegate uh, uh, down there, uh, he has consulted with us uh, over the years, he's introduced this bill each of the last three years. It gets through the House and it dies in the Senate. Uh, so we have made some suggestions. We have made uh, some some recommendations that, that have made it better. Unfortunately, when they amended it on the floor uh, to make it a shall allow this to happen, uh, uh, there's no way I can support anything like that. You're taking the local control from the from the boards. And you're telling them that we know more than you know in your district. Art Tom is the lobbyist for the NRA. We had him on when this bill passed the House. He just posted a comment on our Facebook section. He said, 33 states permit this. It isn't a new concept. It also hasn't had negative consequences in any state that permits it, Dale. I I didn't say that it had negative aspects. I just shift the the onus to we need to be addressing the mental and emotional needs of these kids uh, uh, much more than we're doing. <clears throat> Dale, let me, I want to play devil's advocate a little bit, be deliberately provocative on the issue of spending more money on on any of these issues, whether it's the SRO bill or, or the alternative schooling. Um, as I understand it, you know, I, our performance in public education in West Virginia is 50th of 50. But our spending per capita... That's not actually, that's not actually true. And, and I, I go ahead with your comment, and then I'll address it. Okay, it's, it's certainly towards the bottom. Yet yeah. we're, we're in the mid-range in terms of per capita spending. So something it, it, money seems to be the wrong 
solution to me. I mean, just from an engineering perspective, which is my past, what we're doing seems to be fundamentally wrong because the money, the per capita money should be there. So go ahead and comment, Dale. Okay, well, one of the things that, that uh, is misleading in the per capita student expenditure is uh, we're paying for sins of the past. We spend over $400 million a year to uh, pay back the teacher's retirement system that wasn't funded in the 80s and early 90s. It was a lawsuit by the WBA that put them on a salary scale, 40-year payment scale, to make the retirement system whole. We were putting our money in. The state was supposed to be putting the money in, and they didn't put any money in. So we're paying for the sins of the past for that. We're one of the few states that have a statewide retirement system. We're one of the few states that have a statewide health insurance system. So our per-pupil expenditure is going to be higher because of that. If you look at the dollars that are actually going into the classroom, we fall to about 35th or, or, or 40th, somewhere around there. Now, we're looking at 50th in the nation, and, and that's based on a test score, uh, either a NAIC test score or recently the uh, SAT score. Well, all of our juniors take the SAT. If you look at the ACT, we're in the top 20 in our scores in the ACT. Uh, we have about 85 to 89% of our kids that, that take uh, uh, the, the uh, advanced placement test and pass them. We have 95% of our Votex kids, our technical and career kids, that either go on to very successful uh, jobs or uh, more advanced training or the military. So we're doing a great job there. We do a great job in a lot of different areas, but nobody knows it because no one ever talks about it except except me, quite frankly. Um, you know, we have one of the best pre-K systems in, in the United States. We're recognized for that. We're recognized for the number of uh, our number of kids that we feed each day and, and being in a high poverty state, that, that's important. Um, we do a great job, but you look at a single test score, like a NAIT test score, which does, uh, it's a random selection of 13% of the fourth graders and 18% of the, the uh, eighth graders, and I think I got those reversed, 18% of the fourth graders, 13% of the eighth graders, and base it on that. Well, there were over 2,800 bills introduced this year. If I took a random selection, if I took uh, 18 delegates, 18% uh, of the delegates and 13% and, uh, of the senators or five senators, and judged them on the number of bills they introduced and the number of bills that they actually passed that signed into law, which will be less than 250 this year, um, how would they score on that? You know, that's that's the same same thing as doing this uh, that, um, random selection. I, I talk about if I took all the the ninth graders at, at Martinsburg High School and, and randomly selected 13% um, of them and put them on the foul line and asked them to shoot foul shots, uh, would that give me an accurate indication of how good of a basketball team that, that Martinsburg had or any other school? No, it's, it's a, it's just a random selection, one time selection. But the random selection, I guess, assume all states have work under the same conditions. They, of they random do. Selection. They do. So, uh, so then you cannot make an argument that it's a, uh, it's an invalid assessment of our performance, our students. Uh, it, it's a single snapshot in time. So my argument is look at all the other things that we're doing well. Yeah, you mentioned earlier the uh, the SAT scores where everybody took the SAT test. Uh, the AT&T where we obviously did much better. ACT. ACT, sorry. ACT, yes. That is who takes that? Uh, well, those that are going to college are okay. taking the ACT. Most of the students that want to go to an in-state college are taking the ACT. Okay. And, and we're in the uh, – uh, top 20 in the nation in that. There was uh, uh, our good friend Hoppy Kirchville did an um, uh, article back in, in the fall where he talked about our SAT scores being 50th and how that was unacceptable. And he retracted it because uh, the we had uh, all of our juniors taking the SAT, and he said, and even Mississippi was better. Yeah, but Mississippi had 2% of their kids taking the SAT. Uh, the states 
that have the ACT as their assessment, they are at the bottom of the barrel and and, and all of these um, uh, statistics. So you have to really look at the percentage of the kids that are taking those two. Dale, about a minute left. Uh, what, what do your Senate colleagues tell you about the future of the teacher carry bill? Uh, you know, it, it, it has died there in each of the last few years. I, I, I'm, I, we'll just, it's a kind of a wait and see look, uh, as, as well as the, the teacher pay raise that, uh, uh, educator pay raise for the teachers and service personnel that, uh, will pass the, the house early this week and we'll see what it does in the Senate. Are you anticipating the 5% pay raise to go through? Well, it's actually uh, $2,460 per year for the teachers and $140 a month for the service personnel. They're, it's in statute that their pay scales monthly instead of yearly. That's why it's uh, a monthly amount. Um, I expect something to go through. I've heard Senate President Blair say over and over that he is all for a, a uh, pay raise for educators to help offset the PEIE costs. So, so yeah, I, I do expect something to go through. Thank you, Dale. Appreciate it. You got a story for me before we leave? Well, I haven't you know, asked you for one in a while. When when we were talking about the uh, the tulips to begin with and, and going up and how the deer eat them, I was going to ask do the deer tiptoe through the tulips to show my age, but uh, <laughs> Tiny then we got like on the World War II stuff, and I didn't think it was appropriate to crack a joke like that at that point. You have to ask it in the voice of Tiny Tim. <laughs> well, I don't know that I can do that. <laughs> That was impressive. That was good. <laughs> hey, good, good to talk with you, Dale. Uh, good to talk to you guys. Thank you kindly. Have a good day. All right. You too.